Welcome back to part four of my four part series on icebox cakes. Sadly enough, today is our last episode, but trust me, it's gonna be well worth it. So grab your cup of coffee or tea and a cold drink and sit yourself down and watch the show. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Baking Diva. Well, all good things must come to an end, and today is part four, yeah, the last part of my series on icebox cakes, because you know how I feel about that. Stand back from that oven, take off those oven mitts, and make something that you don't have to bake in the brutal summer heat. So I saved a good one for last. Some of you may have heard of this, and some maybe have not, but back in the 90s, there was a very, very popular fancy icebox cake. You could find it in your uh, grocery store, in the freezer department, by the ice creams. And Breyers put it out, and it was called a Viennetta cake. And I loved it. I loved to buy it when I was having company because it was inexpensive and it looked so pretty when you put it out on the table. I don't know, do you remember it? It had layers of vanilla ice cream, creamy vanilla ice cream in between, I guess like a hard chocolate shell and, and then it was surrounded by cream. But what made it stand out was it had ruffles, uh, ribbons on the side, almost like the ribbon candy you have at Christmas. So we have a fantastic hack for you today. It may not have the ribbons, but it has everything else, and no one will believe that you made this cake. It comes out so good, it feeds a crowd, and it's delicious. So. Let me just tell you a little bit about the Viennetta uh, cake. Viennetta, it was first law launched in Britain. Yes, it was a British ice cream company, according to my notes. And um, they used a technique where when it came out of the machine, whatever it did, it made these like ribbons on the side of the cake. And in the, um, it was like an Italian product. Uh, and what they did is I think, on the layers of the vanilla ice cream, they sprayed like a chocolate compound. So um, they had it all set and it was fantastic and it was like the rage of the 90s. Uh, I don't know what happened after that, but um, Breyer stopped making it and it was not available in the United States and it still isn't. I don't know why, but um, it's possible in some parts of the world you may come across it, but sadly enough, it's not available in the United States anymore. And so I'm gonna show you now the hack, and it's a really good one. Even children can make this by themselves. So what do you say? Enough chatting, we get started? All right, let's get started, okay. The first thing you're gonna need is a nine by 13 pan. I happen to be using, you know, my glass uh, Pyrex pan here, but any nine by 13 pan. Now, you can also make this in an eight by eight pan, but I prefer to make it in the nine by 13, and I'll show you why. So here comes the hack part of it. What do you need next? Well, you need store-bought ice cream sandwiches that's right and this is what we're going to start with i'm telling you this is a fantastic hack that nobody will know that you use these so let me show you what we're going to do now with these sandwiches okay so we have our 9 by 13 pan and we had a box of 12 full-size ice cream sandwiches. So we're gonna unwrap them, take them, and we're gonna layer them like this, and I'll hold it up so you can see. We're gonna begin by layering them this way, 
and I'll put a still in the video. So we're gonna go down to the end of the pan. Here we go. They start to get soft quickly, so don't let them sit out very long. Okay, here we go. We should be able to fit one more here. So as you can see, let me hold this up. This was my first row. I put them in this way. Now, if you can see the other side of the pan, an entire ice cream sandwich won't fit in there. So to fill up this side, we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna cut it in half. They are getting quite soft. And then we're gonna take the halves and we're gonna put them here. So I will hold this up in a minute to show you what I'm doing. Clean my hands here. You see how I'm starting to put the halves next to the whole ones? Because we wanna fill up the entire pan. So let me do that now. Pretty easy. And that's why I said a child can do it alone. If you want to um, cut the ice cream sandwiches in half for the child, that's fine. But the rest of it, they can really do by themselves. So the idea is to take your box of ice cream sandwiches, cover the entire bottom of your pan. Okay. Whoopsie. Okay. I'll hold it up to show you what it looks like. All right, so hopefully you can see this. The entire pan is covered. We went from left to right with the whole ice cream sandwiches and then along the bottom, we have the halves. So that's step one. All right, what is step two now? We're going to use our spatula and we're gonna put Cool Whip on the top of this. Now, the recipe calls for 12 ounces of Cool Whip. My store, unfortunately, only had eight ounce containers, so I had to buy two. So anyway, we're going to put a layer of Cool Whip over our ice cream sandwiches with our spatula. Okay, so the recipe, the entire recipe calls for 12 ounces of Cool Whip. So I'm gonna take six ounces and I'm gonna spread it over these ice cream sandwiches with my spatula. I'm telling you, wait till you see how scrumptious this comes out. So good. I had several um, ice box type cakes um, that I wanted to show you, but I started out by saying it was a four-part series and then I thought oh maybe I should have made it a little longer because I had a couple of other really good ones but I did want to get this one in here so anyway we're doing this today so I'm spreading this over the top this would be six ounces of Cool Whip over the top of these ice cream sandwiches and then the next step you're going to see is the magic step let me just get this spread over. Now my kids and my grandkids went on a cruise. They left today. And I'm sure they're having a ball. They're going to Bermuda. You know, they're going to the Bahamas and I forget where else. So the cousins will all get to um, hang out with each other. And we are babysitting for my daughter's dog, Pebbles. Yes, so Pebbles had me up at 6 a.m. this morning. Mm-hmm. My daughter said, oh, she usually doesn't get up that early. Well, she did today, and I hope she's not going to tomorrow. So, all right. I think we have enough of that spread on there. Just cover the whole entire thing, cover the corner. So we have that all covered. All right, now comes our magic part. You say, Diva, what are we doing next? Well, of this, it's the Smucker's Magic Shell Chocolate Fudge. I hope you can see it. I'll put a still in. 
And this is the type of shell that when it hits something cold, it hardens up. Do you ever go to like a Dairy Queen or one of those places where you get an ice cream cone and they dip it in the chocolate for you and then the chocolate is hard, it makes a shell? Well, that's what this does. Some people will use hot fudge with this and they'll soften it in their microwave and they'll sprinkle the hot fudge on there, but I've tried it both ways and I like the magic shell. So we're gonna take our magic shell and we're going to um, drizzle half of this over the Cool Whip. So let me start doing that. As you can see, it's very liquidy. So there we go. We got half of that drizzled on top. Let me hold it up and show you. See that? All right. Now you say, Diva, what are we going to do next? Well, this recipe does call for two boxes of ice cream sandwiches. So you will need 24 ice cream sandwiches. So we're gonna repeat what we just did. I'm going to put the ice cream sandwiches on. I'm going to um, finish it up by uh, repeating the layers. I'll put the ice cream sandwiches on. I'll put the Cool Whip, and then I'm gonna drizzle the remainder of my magic shell on top. So I'll do that off camera and I'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I finished my layers and I ended with a layer of Cool Whip on the top. Now I wanna take my magic shell and I wanna drizzle it on the top. Now, like I had mentioned earlier, some people wanna use um, hot fudge sauce. Because to me, this is the way I like it and it's a hack for the Viennetta ice cream cake um, because they always use the hard shell in there. So I'm just gonna drizzle this over the top. No rhyme or reason how. Do it whatever way you want. Some people will even crush up candies and all and put them on the top or cookies. I'm gonna leave that up to you. I'm just gonna drizzle my magic shell chocolate sauce over the top. So here we go. I'm just going back and forth in a diagonal. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing this. And once I get this all drizzled, I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. I'm gonna kind of tent aluminum foil over it and I'm gonna put it in the freezer. Now this is one where the recipe doesn't say that you need to put it in the freezer overnight. It says several hours. But as you're working with these ice cream sandwiches, they do get soft. So the idea is you want them to freeze again. So when you cut this, it'll look like a Viennetta cake. You'll see the layers in there. So let me finish doing this. Um, I'll put it in the freezer and I'll be back later on when I do a taste testing and show you what it looks like cut. So don't go away. Okay, it's been about five hours that this has been in my freezer. So it should be nice and cold now. And I'm gonna cut a piece for myself and the cameraman to do a taste testing. Now, just so you all know, even though the cameraman has been MIA, he's fine, don't worry about him, and hopefully he'll be back to assist me soon. So anyway, let me cut a piece of this. Um, I tented the aluminum foil over it, but the magic shell, once it hits the cold Cool Whip, within a very short while, it hardens and it turns into a shell. So my aluminum foil didn't stick to it. So let me cut an end piece of this. I'm gonna cut a big piece. Goes right down. Okay. And let me cut it sideways like this. You know, I always say the end piece is the hardest to get out. So let me see if I can get this out. There we go. All right. And let me hold it up. I'll put a still in and look at that. And I can take a picture of that too. It shows you all the different layers of, there's the chocolate and the white of what would be our, um, our hack of a cake. So I'm gonna taste this now 
and I'll let you know what I think, although I have had it many times before. So let me take a little piece. Mmm. That magic shell, to me, I think that's the best. Because that chocolate just hardens and it's really delicious. You cannot tell. If somebody looked at this cake, you see the stripes in there? There's no way that they can tell you use ice cream sandwiches in here. No. Let me take another bite. Mmm, so good. If you have never made this before and you're making it for the first time, just take my advice and try the magic shell because I think you're going to like it in there. It's so good. I should remind you, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go down below and hit the subscribe and the little bell next to it. And the next time I have a video up, you get a notification. If you'd like to make a comment, you know I try to answer as many comments as I can. And uh, if you want to give me a thumbs up, I know YouTube likes them. So anyway, I hope you're all enjoying your summer. I hope you enjoyed my four-part series on icebox cakes. If you didn't watch parts one through three, I'm going to list them with the links down below in the description box. You might want to go back and watch them. There was a Funfetti one, a peanut butter one, and a salted caramel one. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning into my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hit that subscribe button. It'll help my channel to grow. Have a great summer. Stay cool. Stay away from that oven. And I'll see you soon.